All right. I've uh, acquired this picture to indicate your feeling towards not. So, the question is, well, I have the details. We have x1, x2, random variables distributed by the Poisson distribution with lambda equals 2. And I want to define a new random variable. I want to define y to equal the max of these two random variables, so x1, x2. Okay, by the way, x1 and x2 are, are given, it's given that they're independent. So, define y to be this, and then what we want to do is we want to find, we want to know what is the probability that y is equal to 1. So, what I usually do in this situation, whenever I have a max or min problem, is I kind of just write out what's going on with this value of the random variable y. So what I mean is that y, what is y equal to? Well, y is equal to x1 uh, if x1 is greater than x2, or y is equal to x2 if x2 is greater than x1. So we're interested, though, again, in when y equals 1. So y equals 1, right, depends on the inequality involving x. So when in doubt, definitely want to draw a picture. And the picture I have here is something like this. Uh, we have Poisson random variables. And if you just think about the values in which a Poisson random variable can take on, it has to be positive, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, discrete distribution, right? Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to draw the line where x1 equals x2. So bisects this quadrant. This is x2 equals x1. And again, I'm interested when y equals 1. So, well, y is either going to be equal to x2 or x1. So, we're really only interested when x1 and x2 are equal to 1. Okay, so this is where x1 equals 1. This is where x2 equals 1. And they meet up somewhere here. So this is the point 1, 1. So for me personally, this helps me understand the question a little bit more. And now I can see which region is going to determine what the value of y is. So what I mean here is that if you look at just this region right here, this region right here, this is where x1 is greater than x2. This region right here is where x2 exceeds x1. So, now, in particular though, we're interested in when is it equal to 1. So I pretty much, the way I'm seeing this is three different points. Three different points. I'm going to have a point right here. What does this point represent? This point represents where x2 is equal to 1 and x2 is greater than x1. I also have this point right here. This is where they both equal 1 x1 equals 1 and x2 equals 1. And then I have a point uh, over here. And these points on the dashed line, this one could be anywhere here. These are just all the points where x2 is 1 and x1 is less than 1. All of these points on this line are where you have vice versa. So the points here are where x1 is 1 and x2 is less than 1. So. If I write that out, 
using the correct notation for probability, what is that going to look like? If I want the probability that y is equal to 1, let's just write out exactly what I just said. If I first consider this line where x equals 1, all right, well, the orange line is where they're equal. So this over here that I mentioned before is where x equals 1, then x1 is less than 1. So this is the probability where x2 is equal to 1 and x1 is less than 1. Okay, again, that takes care of this piece right here, this line, this horizontal line. Now, I want to add that to, I want to add that to the place where Let's do the vertical line now. This is where x1 is equal to 1, and x2 is going to be less than 1. So this is the probability where x2 is less than 1, and x1 is equal to 1. And finally, we could have a situation where uh, they're equal. They're both equal to 1. So plus the probability where x1 is equal to 1, and x2 is equal to 1. Now, if you think about this uh, once more, there's a couple things you can say here. Number one, that these two quantities right here, these are going to be equal. Because x1 and x2 are identically distributed, they're also independent. So hopefully you can see what I'm going to say next. OK, so I'm going to clean this up a little bit. As I mentioned, these two quantities are equal. So what I can say is that now probability that y equals 1 is equal to twice the probability that uh, x2 is equal to 1 and x1 is equal to 0. Now, why did I put x1 equals 0 here? Because x1 is less than 1. The random variable x1 is Poisson. It only takes in the value of values 0, 1, 2, 3 natural numbers up to infinity. If x1 is less than 1, the only value you can take on is 0. So that's the probability x1 is 0. I have the 2 here because, again, these two are equal. This quantity, this probability, and this probability are equal. I have two of them. So I'll replace that with twice the first. Last thing I need is x1 and x2 uh, both equal 1. So plus the probability x, uh, x1 equals 1 and x2 equals 1. Okay, so I could put intersect, but I've been putting comma. This is pretty typical to mean and as well. So this means and, right? So comma means and. So now I'm going to use the fact that these two random variables are independent. That tells me now that this is equal to, this is equal to 2 times the probability that x1 is equal to 1 times the probability that x, uh, uh, this is x2, doesn't matter actually, uh, x1 is equal to 0, and then plus the probability that x1 equals 1, and the probability that x2 equals 1. Now if you want, I didn't do this yet, but you could, of course, write down the distribution function for x1 and x2, they're exactly the same. Right? They both have uh, lambda, the mean is 2. So we can write that down if you want. All right, so for each of these x's, we're going to have this distribution. It's discrete. So a lot of times I'll just use p. So p of x uh, i is equal to e to the negative 2 to, uh, to the x i over xi factorial. So this looks kind of crazy with the i there, but it's really just saying where i is 1 or 2, right? So this is just saying both the distribution functions are the same. Uh, they're both Poisson lambdas 2. So just plug stuff in, now we're done. So this tells me uh, that I get that this is equal to uh, t 2 times probability x1 is 1. Okay, so plug in, uh, think of this as being x1, replace x1 with 1. This is e to the negative 2 times 2. Probability x1 is 0. Sorry, this is x1, x2 equals 1. 
x1 equals 0, okay? Plug in 0. So this is just times e to the negative 2. Plus, now I'm dealing with the case where they're both 1. Where they're both 1. So this is going to be, well, I'm just going to square. I mean, these are the same value. I'm just going to square it. So this is uh, equal to, this is equal to e to the negative 2 times uh, 2 squared. So what does this equal? Well, if I just clean this up a little bit, as you can see, I mean, these are basically, these are the same thing. This is actually the exact same thing. So this is going to be, uh, just to simplify this, this looks like 8 e to the negative 4, which is approximately what? So this is approximately 0 0.14 So that takes care of that question. I'm going to continue to cover probability questions until somebody has requested something else. Questions or comments? Well, any questions about this question, leave a comment. And uh, if you want to continue with something, other topic, please comment that as well. As well. And like and subscribe.